I think it's right to say that the traditional view of Macbeth is that for all the awful things that happened in the play, in the end, good triumphs over evil. But modern critics take a much bleaker view. Do, do you think they're right? Yeah, well, I mean, what this comes down to really is how we judge the character of Malcolm, who takes control at the end. Um, it's an interesting question in so many Shakespeare plays. What, what's, what's happened? You, you, you get rid of something terrible. In this case, clearly, getting rid of the tyrant Macbeth is a good thing. But what, what are you left with? How has the country been traumatised? What, what kind of salvation is brought by Malcolm? Yeah. So one of the things that it's really worth thinking about is that rather strange scene in England when Malcolm and Macduff are together. And there's a real sense of them testing each other. Yeah. And Malcolm, he's, he is a little bit cunning, a little bit of a schemer, what in the parlance of the Renaissance you might, you might call a Machiavellian character, uh, a character with ulterior motives of his own. Um, so I, th I think it's absolutely right that things are left a little bit open at the end. There's also a degree of uncertainty as to what the future relationship between England and Scotland is yeah. going to be like. And of course, when the play was written, King James had just become King of England as well as Scotland. So that was a real sort of live debate at the time. Yeah. How sympathetic do we feel uh, to Macbeth during the play? I think Stephen Booth says to be the audience of Macbeth is almost like being Macbeth. Well, this is one of the great things about drama, isn't it? That in the end, the most compelling, charismatic characters in a play are often the evil ones. Um, let's face it, which actor would rather play Malcolm than Macbeth? Shakespeare takes us into the mind of Macbeth. He's a character of tremendous energy and charisma. And yes, in the audience, we share his thoughts, we share his ambitions, and we almost find ourselves contaminated with his own evil, that blood that sticks so memorably to his hands, in some sense, sticks to our imagination in the audience. How important is Macbeth's Christianity? Do you, does, is, is that final speech, is, is, it, is it as if he's kill the best part of himself? I mean, is his Christianity very important? The question of Christian faith is very important in, in Macbeth because clearly this is a play where notions of temptation, of guilt, of conscience become very important. Here lay Duncan, his silver skin, his golden blood, that, that sense of Duncan, the king, is God's representative on earth. In some, at some level, to kill Duncan is to kill God. Conscience then strikes. And Macbeth, when he reflects on the journey he's gone on, reflects towards the end of the play, there is, I think, a real mixture of a sense of remorse, a recognition that he's on his way to hell. But combined with that, there is also this, this kind of sense of meaninglessness, of nihilism, the, the great tomorrow and tomorrow yeah. speech, the sense that life has no purpose, the very opposite of Christianity. But the Christian idea of a journey of questions of conscience, good, evil, divine reward and punishment, that's there as well. The two things are held in tension. How seriously should we take that last speech? I mean, is that Shakespeare's view or just Macbeth being a disappointed man? Shakespeare never gives you his own view. He'll, at different moments, show you different processes in the development of a character's mind. And in the end, he'll give you a series of ideas, a series of thoughts, a series of feelings. You have to weigh up for yourself in the audience. That is what makes the plays so endlessly interesting to read, to study, to watch, that you can make different choices. Actors make different choices, directors do, and we as readers and people analysing the plays and talking about them, we have to weigh up those different choices. Shakespeare doesn't tell you what to think. And I suppose that's the same of the whole argument of fate versus free will in the play, with the witches making their predictions, but, but Beth behaving in a way as if the predictions aren't going to come true. It's, it's, where do you think? I mean, I think it's Wilbur Sanders who says that in the play, he's, Macbeth is the, like the plaything of a giant malevolence. What is he telling us about fate and free will? Yeah, the question of the weird sisters, they have foreknowledge of what will happen. You know, because it's a play, that if 
prophet-like characters come on at the beginning and tell you that something is going to happen, then you know it will happen. And so in one sense, the whole thing seems predetermined. But in another sense, Macbeth is given a series of choices and the play makes much of the process of him making up his mind, talking to himself in soliloquy about which way to go. That gives you the impression of freedom. Of course, in the theology of the time, there was a huge debate around free will and determination. The, uh, there, were, there were new religious ideas, particularly coming from Protestant thinkers, such as John Calvin. Um, people were really wrestling with the senses. What is the relationship between the freedom we have as human subjects and the sense that God foreknows everything? Is foreknowledge the same as predestination? These are difficult questions. They were debated in the theology of the time. They're also debated in the play. Do you think the play leaves us with the idea that evil is stronger than good? I don't think it does, because although there's a, a tremendous sense of the force of evil, in the end, Macduff does triumph over Macbeth. And Macduff is such a good character. The, 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 I mean, the, the moment when Macduff hears of his wife and children's death, you know, all my pretty chickens in that dam, that one falls with all, you say. And then Malcolm says, you must dispute it like a man. Macduff says, but I must also feel it as a man. If you just look at the idea of manliness, are you a man, Lady Macbeth says to Macbeth. The beginning of the play, there's a very strong sense that manliness is to do with violent action, military action, um, assertiveness. But what Macduff introduces, the idea that being a man is about being human, about feeling, about all the good things. And it seems to me we hold on to those at the end of the play. In the end, they're more powerful than the, the evil.